Thank you. Uh, I just want to say I'm coming at this as a person who's used to clicking the slides, so this is going to be really, really tricky for me. I like to, you know, I'm an academic, so I like to harumph a lot. So I'm actually, by tradition, a soil geomorphologist. I fell into this historical GIS as an offshoot of the research I do in Vietnam, looking at the recovery of battlefields. Uh, this class that I had uh, ended up, we just decided to look at historical geography of the Vietnam War. Students picked a variety of different topics. That's what this talk is going to be about. The slide that you're looking at right now is on total Vietnam War deaths. The students, uh, there was a collection of history students and geography students. They took US Census data, and they took the uh, entire database of deaths of the war, looked at the hometowns of these uh, deaths, and then started looking at the demographics of these deaths, and they got into some major controversial issues. One of the biggest controversial issues was the, uh, was, uh, the, the thought that the majority, the higher percentage of deaths was in the African American population. What these students did is they found out that that was not the case, that this actually generated some controversy in some uh, internet exchanges they had. What they found out was uh, there was a lot uh, related to uh, median household income in relation to Vietnam War deaths, and it wasn't so much race related. Another project that uh, another group of students did was they looked at uh, helicopters and uh, helicopter crash locations of the Vietnam War. Their work is uh, ongoing still. Uh, what they were looking at is helicopter crashes in uh, proximity to landing zones in t uh, and from air bases. One of the uh, applied aspects of this work that they're doing is I've already been approached by several Vietnam veterans and they're using this information to go and find where their friends might have been lost, MIA extractions. This is uh, just a breakdown of some of the crashes by year between 1962 and 1975. I should say that this is an animation on YouTube they also produced and it's pretty interesting to see how these uh, crash locations correspond with the, the time of the year and the, the timing of the war. Um, they looked at the type of hel helicopters as well. Another student did a uh, battlefield case on. That's where I do the, the research in terms of battlefield recovery. What this particular student did is he took a book that had the coordinate location of every single casualty at case on and put those into an Excel sheet. And I think he's not here because he's blind from the process, but there were a lot of dots on that map. The, the dots that you're looking at right there represent between 1964 and 1968. The information came from a book called Battalion of Kings, who was a chaplain at Quezon, you know, it was in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Um, a lot of these combat deaths are uh, at the same coordinate, so what this uh, particular student did as well is he looked at those in a temporal way. This is the, the database that was compiled. This database has uh, generated a lot of interest in the veterans uh, community. Uh, several Vietnam veterans have now asked me to uh, make a map from everywhere where they got shot in the buttocks and put it on a coffee mug to helping them find the remains of someone who was MIA. A good story in that is that there's just was a breakthrough in finding uh, the remains of someone who was put in an unmarked grave 40 years ago that we just found through the use of GIS at Quezon. These are just some of the other maps that that student did that were, uh, that showed then a temporal framework. Another student uh, took some information that was generated from the tapes file, which was compiled by the US Air Force during the Vietnam War, and that uh, is uh, the coordinate locations of all the exposures of the various dioxins. Agent Orange is the most common of them, but there was Agent Blue White, it was just the stripe on the container that was used. This particular student didn't have enough time to do the entire uh, area, so they just did the one area that you saw on that map. Another student uh, did decide to do some least cost path analysis with what we commonly refer to as the Ho Chi Minh Trail. It wasn't just one trail, it was actually a very complex network. And so this student also went blind myopia from digitizing all of the information that you're seeing on that hard copy. He transferred that into digital format and created a GIS database of that. 
and the map that you saw there was what he had. If you want to look at more, there's posters in the other room. Thank you.